That's right, we're checking out BTR Karting at Aloha Stadium. Then break out the grill, see how we're putting a twist on some American classics. Plus, a healthy alternative with all the flavor. Try this low-carb poke bowl recipe. This and more right now on High Now. Eat my dust! I'm Kanoi Gibson. And I'm Kainoa Carlson, and it is Memorial Day weekend. That means three day weekends, eating all the food, and I ain't going to gym. I'm Summer not doing time. it. We're not going to the gym. Well, I'm trying to get my summer body back. Yes. So, what we are going to do today is give you a Poke Bowl, but in a low carb fashion. Kanoi is all about it right now. If you're following her on social media, <laughs> Every time I click, I got to go past because oh, I'm eating so chili. I'm, I'm getting heavier. Oh, my gosh. All right, okay. so what do we got? So what we're basically doing is replacing the carbs, the rice, with cauliflower rice. You know, the cauliflower, it didn't get asked if it wanted to be all of these things, but suddenly <laughs> it's going to be all okay, these okay, things. Okay, okay, okay. So okay. we're going to put a little bit of cauliflower rice, okay? Now, the thing is, is that you kind of got to make it taste a little bit better because, I mean, it's cauliflower, okay? And it I'm tastes a like local cauliflower. boy. I don't really go anywhere without rice. This is but. the key right here. This is like a garlic, chili, oil type mm -hmm. of thing. This is the one I'm talking about. This is the most Give amazing it a nice one. Little Kit. You can get it in Japan, but you can also get it here. So we're gonna put some of that in your bowl. Oh, okay, cool. Okay, and, and the more the merrier. And yeah, mix it up. Just mix it right into your cauliflower. Can I have a little bit more. Yeah, a little spicy guy. You are. Okay, and, okay, and it's yeah. not too spicy, oh, okay. so that's the good thing. You so you just want to mix together, that in. Get oh. some color. Yes, mix it in. Get some color. Okay. And once that's settled, cauliflower rice. Yes. Okay. How do people get cauliflower rice? Is it they have that at the store? You, you, they do now. You can actually buy it frozen, and you just microwave it, and you pat it dry, and okay, then you're good. Okay. All right. Then you're gonna top it with some furikake. That's I kind of like a lot. Yep. All right. Then you do your poke of choice, which this is just the Hawaiian style poke okay. from Foodland. Thank you very much. Okay. Putting my poke. Put some on there for you. Okay. What's your favorite style poke? I'm a spicy ahi guy. Yeah, I was too. I mean, how are you gonna go wrong? Mayo, fish, and rice. I agree. That's I all know. in the that's all in the local boy staple, you know. Okay, but our I'm gonna make this kind of my style. Okay, so okay. I actually like. But I love. Yeah, what else do we have? Here? I like to Put add some, some jalapeno. Okay. To give it a little bit more spice. I do love okay. cilantro. That's for sure. I like to add some cilantro as well. And then I also like to squeeze lime. Okay. I always love squeezing lime on my poke. Okay. So the low carb, this is a good kind of sub for rice and just so yes. that it doesn't leave you with that heavier feeling, Exactly. Right? So my husband actually decided he wanted to do this. And at first I was like, oh, that is not going to work. You do not <laughs> stick cauliflower with fish. You just don't do it. But it worked. Okay, this is another key ingredient right here. This okay, is fried look, oh. garlic. You can get this at any of the Asian grocery okay. stores. So I just got this at Don Quixote. And you just put it right just on gonna top. Just going to garnish okay? that on the top. Give it a little bit more. A right. little bit of crunch. There it is. Okay, what do you want? You got a spoon. Try I it. got everything, yep. Try it. Low carb poke bowl. Okay, try it out and see how it tastes. Did you squeeze lime? Do you want I lime? did, I did. I got okay. some lime on there. Try it out. How's it? That's really good. It's good, right? It's a little bit on the it's, lighter side. It is. Yeah. So you're not going to fall asleep. But the flavor is still there. Yeah. The flavor is still there. So there it is. You got all of the flavor without all of the calories. If you're trying to get your summer mm -hmm. bod, trying to get into shape, we'll have this recipe as we always do up on our website, highnowdaily.com. And ooh, it's starting to smell good in here. That's right, we got a whole bunch of food coming your way, but you know what, it's Memorial Day weekend, so we got that extra day off. If you and your family are looking for some fun in the sun, BTR Karting is where it's at. Me and Kanoi got to check fun. it out at Aloha Stadium. Take a look. just want to feel like a kid, BTR Karting's where it's at. That's right. All these years since 2013, we've been selling ride-on toys. Better than retail, that's our store. And everybody's always asking, hey, you should rent them out. My kids always grab the carts and they run around in the carts at our store and they're like, oh, there's no space. And I started calling around and I called the Aloha Stadium and they're like, yeah, that's a good idea. It worked out that they were looking for something like this. These carts are fun for the whole family and they got tracks for the adults and the kiki. There's a kid track, so on the kid track, we can run six to nine kids. We have a car where an adult and a kid can run or or two adults can run on that car as well. Three people are allowed on the go-kart track as long as they're 54 inches and they can reach the pedal. Ah, I got to strap in and test drive the Eagle, one of BTR's signature carts. Here we go! These bad boys go as fast as 17 miles an hour. 
for lightning. Whereas Kanoi's ride was a little more street sound. So the carts are nine horsepower. They're made in Oregon, quality made. Everything's made here by hand from our, our manufacturer. This part right here is the best part of the track and my seven-year-old son designed it. My plans are to have multiple tracks. Dirt track, uh, drift track, adult track, kid track, night track, as many tracks as we could fit. Endless possibilities. It's something I've always wanted to do. I always told my wife that I wanted to do something in entertainment for kids. I just don't like going to uh, a lot of places where there's, there's a certain age group that is blocked off. So our goal is to be in that certain age group to get everybody underneath 18. That's our goal, for kids to come and have fun. Eat my dust! That's our goal, is a place for kids to have fun, where they can stretch their legs, they can open it up, they have space to run around, and they're not just like in a little bitty compartment. So if you and the Ohana feel the need for speed, BTR karting is can't miss fun in the sun. Website's better than retailhawaii.com. That's where you go for reservations, and it, there's a section that says rentals and sign your waiver here. That's right, VTR Carding at Aloha Stadium. We'll have all this up on HighNowDaily.com. Let's go! Ah! Uh, out <laughs> Brought to you by Cutter Chevrolet. We're gearing up for summer and it's time to start firing up the grills. So we called on the board short chef, Hunter Gentry. I'm going to the Butcher and Bird to see my friend Chuck Wakeman for some gourmet burger meat for my Kraft cheeseburgers. For me, the most important thing is that you're using good quality meat. USDA Prime has great fat content. Cool. <laughs> Hunter, good to have you back. Thank you for having me. What are you making today? We're going to do some bacon nut hot dogs. And for the burgers, we're going to do some cheese sauce on top, lettuce, onions, tomatoes. We're going to dust it for today. <laughs> you're speaking my language, OK. So now we're gonna grill the hot dogs. The Oscar Mayer wieners. These are actually made with chicken, pork, and turkey. I'm gonna do the smash burgers. Caramelized onions in the pan. Nice family friendly food, but kick it up a notch, you know. A little bit of spice, you know. Impress so your for... friends. Now we're gonna bacon wrap our cooked hot dogs and we're just gonna get a nice sear on them. You know, when my mom started giving me some independence, she would tell me to go pick up bacon. She would tell me, get the yellow package. And the thing that I actually learned is that they actually hand trim the bacon, so you get these perfect slices every time. Oh yeah, you have nice fat to meat ratio. It's just perfect. So now we're gonna make our cheese sauce. A little bit of butter, flour, a little cream, and a little milk in there. And we're gonna melt our cheese. And so you're using a mixture of the fresh cheese slices and also the Kraft Singles? And the Singles. The thing that I love about Kraft cheese is that they use real milk and there's no preservatives and then you're just gonna get that fresh flavor every time. Ketchup was the best thing that ever happened to veggies, right? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> so we're using some Kraft Heinz ketchup and then we're gonna use the sweet honey barbecue sauce oh. right in the chili. Just one hot dog in there, a little bit of chili, mac and cheese with our cheese sauce, red onions, burgers, a little bit of mayo. Some olive oil mayo, which is all the rage right now. You've got half the amount of fat and cage-free eggs in that one. Some Heinz mustard. All natural ingredients, stone ground mustard, and it gives that perfect balance between flavor and tang, right? Mm -hmm, definitely. Ketchup, a little bit of relish on top. I love that. You got that sweet and tanginess. Chili, hot dog, mac and cheese. Mm. The kid in me is approving it. Now I'm going for the burger. Like I said, brings back all the childhood memories with all of the amazing condiments in there, but just something takes it to a whole new level. Whoo, Hunter, amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. All right, make sure you guys got your pantry stocked with all the Kraft Heinz products. It's the best. Brought to you by Kraft Heinz. Coming up. Tight Tacos Maui is Honolulu bound. Details on the Taco Tuesday at Moke's Kaimuki you won't want to miss. Plus, behind the scenes at Shinyo Lantern Floating Hawaii. Hear the inspiration behind this year's interactive experience when Hai Now returns. Hey, 
Aloha and welcome back to High Now Weekender. Look, you don't want to miss this Taco Tuesdays. They're not all made equal. June 1st, we got an awesome pop-up happening. That's right. Tight Tacos is coming over here from Maui to Honolulu yep. for a one-day pop-up with Mokes in Kaimuki. We've got co-owner Reggie in the house with us. Hello. What's up? Thank you. Thank you. Oh Thanks my goodness. Me. Tell us about this Taco Tuesday event that you guys yeah, got going yeah. on. We're, uh, we're doing it with Kiola and Mokes from 5 to 9. It's BYOB. Ooh. Um, so come hang out. DJ, uh, Mr. Nick's going to be there too. DJs and tacos. DJs. <laughs> oh, this uh, is a yeah. party. It wow. is a party. It's Taco Tuesday. And then we're just going to go all out and keep it real simple. Uh, we got birria tacos, carnitas, oh. and then a Baja fish taco. Is, oh, that's what you brought today? That, yeah, that's what okay. I brought today. Do we get to taste those? Yes, ma'am. Okay. okay, so okay, is it beautiful? Do we garnish them? How yeah, yeah. Do? So I'll go ahead and garnish oh. it for you. This is the birria. Oh, I this love this. Yeah. So now, now, Reggie, for people who don't know, what is Tight Tacos? Tell, tell us about you guys. Yeah, so me and my wife started this um, back in the mainland, um, and we wanted to bring Mexican street style food to mainland. Um, how we grew up eating it in California. Nice. So we we set up shop literally the next day with the cardboard sign with the two dollar street tacos. I had no idea what I was doing. Oh but we God. just did it. Um, no permits, nothing. We just went for it. And next thing you know, um, yeah. Now there's two food, uh, just two restaurants in Portland, and there's um, one in Kalui. Nice. Maui. Okay. Beautiful. So what else do we put on? We here? got onions. Onions. So while you're doing that, um, you guys can also we can order something called the quesadilla. What is the, that? Yeah. So the quesadilla is the super trendy right now. It's yeah. the hype. Um, we do that on Saturdays. Okay. It's a crispy hard shell taco, very very bright red. And then so you there's get the a consomme. difference between birria right. and quesadilla. Well, then. birria is the traditional um, goat food. stew, yeah. Okay, and then, got it. And then um, in Mexico, they'll just eat it as a taco, and then they'll have the consomme on the side and they'll eat it. The oh. quesadilla is the craze right now with the cheese, yes. the dipping, yeah, and that comes together like Therefore that. Therefore, the the quesa yeah. in the in the word, right? Okay, yes. and so, uh, so where did this DJ come from? Uh, that was all Keola. Uh, yeah. He was like, we got to make it a party. Let's go all out. Yeah. yeah, I love that. Isn't it so amazing though that we're able to like start opening again and. People are able to eat again, the community coming together, helping each other out. Yeah. Speaking of yes. eating, I haven't said anything in a while. Because <laughs> I garnished this bad boy and I'm going into sample. Okay, I'm gonna try this mm. too. Oh my gosh. Do we So have this to... one's the video. Yeah, that's I'm the... gonna try that yeah. one. Do we have to make a reservation mm. or something? No, that's no. We're um yeah, first come, first serve. Mm. Yeah, five to nine. Come hang out. Five to nine, Tuesday, June first. Tuesday, June first. This video taco is money, man. Oh money. my goodness. Thank you. Thank that's you. real deal. From not knowing what you're doing to this, that's yeah. a pretty amazing. <laughs> okay, one more time and where your shop in Kahului? Um, it's in Hanukkah oh. Street, so <laughs> right off the airport, um, 349 Hanukkah Street. Social media too, you guys got Instagram, Social Facebook, media, Instagram, yes sir, we're on it. What do we follow you at? Uh, Tight Tacos Maui. Tight Tacos Maui. Tight oh Tacos God, Maui. Maui. This is amazing. Thank you so Thank much you again. Thank you so much for having me. Make sure me. you guys check out that uh, that pop-up coming up yep, next June Tuesday, 1st. 5 to 9 p.m. We'll have more up on HighNowDaily.com. Hello. Oh, good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. While this year's lantern floating ceremony may not be like years past, the heart remains the same. And this is beautifully displayed through an interactive experience. We caught up with the artists behind the lantern and murals. I've been involved with senior lantern floating since 2007. We're gonna make a pattern first with the paper. This year, since we have a very different type of presentation, they reached out to me to design the production. We couldn't offer the same type of event that we usually do at the beach. Try to keep the same essence. Try to offer a place to gather and reflect one another and create hope. That was sort of my inspiration and goal. It really wanted to emphasize the meaning of life. Also, what we are going through as a pandemic, you see the uh, kukui tree, it overcomes any obstacles. And also, the tree symbolizes life and the four elements of life, which is water, fire, air, and earth. Uh, when I started thinking about the tree, I thought, well, what is the state tree of Hawaii? And that was kukui tree. And also, Keisama, uh, Her Holiness, talks about how uh, one light can make a difference. And uh, Kukui tree is also known as a candle nut tree. So with all of that, it fit perfectly for the show. People will come in, 
and there are tents set up for people to sit down and write prayers and messages and they walk into that kukui tree lantern. They're going to be bamboo inside where they can hang their prayers inside and then walk out with, with hope that some transcendent from sort of a sad moment of people who have lost loved ones and uh, be able to think about future and be able to move on. The mural will reflect that feeling. And then there are eight panels of message boards where the messages came from all over the world. And those will be displayed so people can read that. I do feel very honored to be a part of this. From the get-go, it was a really wonderful collaboration. And after we started talking about the main walls, I said, you know, it would be really great if I could get my Kamehameha students involved. Every design is from the heart. They knew how important this ceremony was. So the kids were really thoughtful, they were really intentional, and they feel just really grateful that they were able to help. So if people can go to lantanfloatinghawaii.com, and they can reserve their spot. On Memorial Day, there's going to be a half an hour television special from 6.30 to 7 o'clock on KGMB. For more information, you can visit our Facebook and Instagram or go to lanternfloatinghawaii.com. Brought to you by Shinyo Lantern Floating Hawaii. Hey guys, chances are you probably got a power tool at home, which means chances are also that you're not using it very much. What are you doing? You're putting screws in, you're digging holes, that's it. But they got a ton of attachments here for power drills at City Mill that'll take your power drill to the next level. We got Ross here to show us some of the attachments. Summertime coming up, people gonna start using their grills. It's not been cleaned for a while. A wire brush attachment, clearing all this stuff off there. Look at that. Real easy. That attack me, Google Street Town. Oh, this is killer. How easy this is. You can also clean other stuff. Yes, you Different can. Different attachments. Rusty shovel. Take the rust off your shovel. <laughs> Look at this, guys. Barely a touch. Grills to shovels. What else we got? This stone attachment, you can even sharpen. Just get the hole. Start running it. Okay. And just get the edge off. Put, put, pull out some weeds or cut some weeds. Cleaning things, sharpening things. Yeah. What is this one? This is a paint mixer? Just a paint mixer. Do some paint touch up, but you don't want to go get that stick and stir that can that may have been sitting there for a while. There's a clear separation of liquid. Put that in there. Okay. And start stirring it. Squeeze it. Some more. There you go. Yeah. Pull it out. So, but it cleans the shaft. Another attachment you can use, you can attach this pad with the sandpaper and you can turn your drill into a sanding machine also. So another use from drilling to driving screws to mixing paint to sanding machine. A lot of attachments that can be used on your drill to use it more than a drill. Hey guys, there you go. Whether you're cleaning your grill, you're mixing your paint, you're taking rust off the shovel, power drills can be used for a ton of different things. All of these are available at City Mills across the island. All the attachments are also available on citymill.com. Brought to you by City Mill. Coming up. And the new Miss Hawaii 2021 is Miss Chinatown. We sit down with the newly crowned Miss Hawaii. Plus, a look at part of modern Hawaii's past. Take a tour of this Paiko Lagoon retreat after the break. Welcome back to the High Now Weekender. You know, earlier this month, Courtney Choi was crowned Miss Hawaii 2021. The Eva Beach woman bested 16 other contestants to take the title. And we have her here with us. And the most amazing thing is, is Courtney, you graduated from law school the very next day. Yes, that is true. Oh my <laughs> that totally happened. Oh my gosh. Congratulations Aww, and thanks for coming thank here. You. This is really exciting. And I do want to just take a look at the moment that you were crowned because okay. it was the most adorable thing. Let's take a look. Okay. And the new Miss Hawaii 2021 is Miss Chinatown. <laughs> oh, I have chicken skin. What was going through your head at that moment? I know everybody asks you. Wow, I mean, I was in disbelief. I did not, could not believe my name was called and I was just super grateful to be in the top five. And just when the, it was coming down to the final girls, I thought, wow, I was just so proud of myself. And I was just so proud of all of us that had made it that far. I mean, competing for Miss Hawaii is a feat in and of itself. So I was just so grateful. It sure yeah. is. And I know, I know the feeling exactly. When my name was called in 2003, let's not talk about how long ago that was. But 
I mean, really, it is. It's, what? This is really happening. Okay, so Nikki, who was last year's Miss Hawaii, she was actually Miss Hawaii for two years, mm -hmm. Miss Hawaii during the pandemic, and here you are, we're still going through it. What are you looking forward to in the future and being Miss Hawaii still in the pandemic? No, I totally understand. This was such a tough year for everyone, but I'm just so excited to be out in the community as much as I can and just bring that positive light back into our community. And I want to bring that perseverance. You know, our Hawaii is such a strong state mm -hmm. and we can overcome anything together. And so I hope I can be out there and just meet new people and hopefully bring that positive light to everyone and to the 100th anniversary of Miss America. Oh my ah! gosh. Well, you are already bringing the positivity right here into this room. Uh, as, we, as we look ahead though, as we talked about you graduating from law school what are we looking forward to for your career well i was planning to take the july 2021 bar exam this oh year my gosh. but because of my responsibilities i want to fully dedicate myself to this role and so i'll be deferring my bar exam to next year okay and so after that i can't wait to hopefully pass and advocate for the people of hawaii oh my goodness i know you're gonna pass you're an amazing woman here already doing such great things and i mean do we know what's going to happen during this year for miss hawaii what what are you going to be doing Oh, I, I'm just excited to be out in the community, partnering yeah. with different organizations. I have a few uh, uh, community events coming up that I'm really excited about, and I'm just excited to be with this organization and have an amazing team behind me yeah. as I could, uh, go throughout this year. Yeah, definitely yeah. surrounded by amazing people. And then, of course, the Miss America competition coming up in December in Connecticut this year. Uh, what are you doing to prepare? I know there's so much to do. It was crazy because as I was going through Miss Hawaii, I thought about myself and the journey I've had and I felt a lot of the preparation came before Miss Hawaii through law school and through mm -hmm. just the experiences I've had. So I'm gonna bring that to my training for Miss America and just continuously hone into who I am and what I'm about and what I value. Wow, any any specific part of the pageant that you're really focusing on? For me, it was swimsuit. I was like, oh gosh, that was the hardest part I have to do. <laughs> no, I'm really excited for interview. I love yeah. interview and I think that's where you can really show and tell your story. And I think that's what Miss Hoya and Miss America is about is storytelling and letting others know, you know, to tell their story as well. I so. know, okay, let's take a look here at my story. Look at us, I haven't put this on in almost 20 years, really quick. Courtney, any words of wisdom to the future generation out there? I would just encourage everyone to be yourself. Just fully embrace who you're becoming and just be patient with, in the process as well. I never, I had to experience that firsthand and I'm so excited to share that throughout my years with Hawaii. Amazing, yeah. Courtney, congratulations once again. Good luck at Miss America and throughout your entire year. We'll have more up on her and how you can watch the Miss Hawaii pageant on HighNowDaily.com. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Owning a property in Hawaii is already a blessing, but if you live here at the Paiko Lagoon Retreat, you own a little piece of heaven. And today we're meeting up with Luxury Locations Realtor to take a look around. Aloha, Dolores. Hi, can I welcome and aloha to this private Paiko Lagoon Retreat. This one is my daughter, Amanda, also a realtor associate. Why don't we walk around the property? Yeah, I would love to see it. This property is surrounded by 700 feet of water frontage. You have the pond on one side, the stream which opens out to the Paiko Lagoon, which creates a lot of privacy. It's also only one of four homes in a private gated road. It's an 8,000 square foot single level home and features five bedrooms, six baths, and a private guest quarters, and sits on over an acre of impeccably landscaped gardens perfect for indoor and outdoor entertaining. This hidden gem is just about 20 minutes from Waikiki. This really feels like old Hawaii. It is, and over here is a pond which was built in the 1700s, and you see some of the residents fishing here. They have big barracudas out here too. I could live here, Dolores. Yeah. <laughs> The Kanivai Fish Pond is one of the last functioning shoreline fish ponds in Honolulu. Listed on state and national historic registers, this royal pond is one of the few that remains on the island, and its history spans almost a thousand years, as evidenced by the many water gourds and fishing artifacts found here. It's also believed to be the site of the first European contact to Oahu by Captain Portlock in 1786. Oh my goodness, this is what will take your breath away. I know, isn't it a great place to have your yoga out here yeah. and looking out into the lagoon? A former fish pond, Paiko Lagoon is fed by fresh spring waters and the Kulio'o stream. So Dolores, who built this home? The home was designed by Russian architect Vladimir Osipov, who came to Hawaii in the 30s. He's known as a master of Hawaiian architecture, specializing in indoor outdoor living, and he loves to sit on the property for days 
feel the breeze so he knows how to position it. And interestingly, he lives just uh, two doors down from here. Wow, he's done an amazing job here. He did, yes. This is an ideal retreat for anyone who enjoys nature, in the outdoor living, and the mid-century modern aesthetic. It's also suited for entertaining, hosting family and friends, and just a vacation home. It's also a chance to own a modern piece of historical Hawaii. If you'd like more information on this Paiko Lagoon retreat on Kalaniano'ole Highway, contact your realtor. Or you can also contact Dolores Beriones at Locations. With more than 30 years of high-end residential real estate experience, she is one of Oahu's top agents specializing in luxury properties. Brought to you by Locations Hawaii. Coming up, it's known as the lunchtime facelift. See the minimally invasive treatment from Elite Health Hawaii that can help soften those age lines. Details after the break. As we age, we begin to notice those fine lines and sagging, and you may not be up for the facelift, but Elite Health Hawaii has a minimally invasive procedure called PDO Threads, and I've nominated my sister Myla here to get a lunchtime <laughs> facelift. PDO Threads are uh, polydiaxonone threads. Some of the PDO Threads are for lifting, and some of them are just for collagen generation, and some of them can have a filling effect as well. This will leave you looking perfectly natural. I always tell people you're gonna get about a 20 to 30% improvement with each procedure that we do. It takes me about an hour and a half to do it. Almost all of that time is the numbing process. I do the anesthetic in three layers, the cream. By the time I'm done, that area is usually quite numb. And that will last for about an hour to two hours, depending on the person. So it's similar to when you go to the dentist and your cheek will feel numb. We also only need to make one little pilot hole for the cannula, and I just wiggle it through the skin and then I'll hold on to the thread and I'll pull the cannula out and the thread will remain. The little bit larger threads, those ones have little one-way barbs on them and we tunnel them underneath the skin and then we move the skin back into place over the top of the thread and those little barbs will hold it in place. They'll dissolve over the course of a few months and then when they're dissolving, they're going to be leaving a permanent band of collagen in that area. Your body just wraps it in collagen. The overall effect of those lifting threads is gonna last about 12 to 18 months. So it's something that you want to continue to do as sort of part of your anti-aging regimen. They're smaller threads, they just slide in there and then over the course of about three to four weeks, they stimulate more collagen production and they also dissolve a little more quickly, maybe in about three months, but the effect remains because the collagen remains. And then there are some that have a little bit of a coil to them. So they have a little bit of a volumizing effect. Doing it earlier rather than later is going to be more helpful. We can get a better effect and then we can stave off the real sagging by doing it a little bit earlier. So that's why they call it the lunchtime facelift because you can come at lunchtime, I can do this procedure, and then you can go back to work. We've been doing this procedure for as long as anybody in Hawaii at this point and I've probably done more than most people and I actually am an instructor for AIAM and I go around and I do trainings for other physicians and uh, nurse injectors on how to do the PDO threads. Truly a lunchtime facelift. If you're interested in the PDO threads and you'd like more information, you can find that on our website at EliteHealthHawaii.com, uh, on our Facebook page. Then you can find me on Instagram at Scott Sanderson MD, or you can call our office at 523-5483. Brought to you by Elite Health Hawaii. Hey, oftentimes we put off retirement thinking it's far in the rear view mirror and it's not anytime close, but it is. Luckily, we caught up with the experts at Hawaii State Federal Credit Union to talk about planning for a better retirement. The pandemic has definitely changed the way people look at retirement and financial planning. It was a real wake up call for a lot of people, but especially those who realized that they were so unprepared for the huge financial impact of losing one or more incomes in their household. People are realizing that they have to establish a better financial position for themselves and their families. In terms of retirement, we see a lot of people coming in looking to retire earlier than they had planned. A lot of our clients who come in for investment advice are now coming in to see if it's possible for them to retire sooner rather than later. Some tips to prepare for retirement, save, save, save. That's the most important part. But there are three things I usually tell people that they should do. The first is to create a budget. 
Know what you spend. If you know what your expenses are and what your income is, there's less of a chance for you to overspend when you shouldn't. The second thing you can do is make saving a part of your monthly expenses. You already allocate a certain amount of your paycheck to rent or your mortgage, food, utilities, and your everyday needs. Add saving to that allocation before you spend your discretionary funds. The third thing you have to do is invest. We have to invest, take risks, in order to be successful in retirement. Now, unless you work for the government, it's very unlikely that you'll have a pension. A lot of employers offer 401ks or other employer-sponsored plans for you to save for yourself for retirement. But what if your company does not offer a 401k? Are there things that you can do in order to save for your own retirement? Absolutely. Whether you work for a company or you work for yourself, or your company has a 401k or doesn't, you can save on your own for retirement. There are a lot of different IRAs that you can invest in. It is beneficial for you to meet with a financial advisor when you're planning for retirement. There is so much information out there on investing and retirement planning, financial planning, but it could be a little hard to sift through all of that information on your own. Financial skills aren't the type of things that you learn in high school. So no matter your age or your personal situation, where you are in life right now, seek out a financial advisor and have them give you the information you're looking for in order to start planning for your financial future. If you wanna learn more, you can reach any of our CFS advisors on our website. You can make an appointment at hawaiistatefcu.com. Brought to you by Hawaii State FCU. Coming up on High Now, a principal with over 22 years in education. We're at Waiahole Elementary School. We'll tell you all about her. See how she's making a difference in the lives of Keiki after the break. The Hawaii Education Association is celebrating its 100th anniversary by highlighting local educators who are doing exceptional work in the community. Today, we're catching up with the principal at Waiahole Elementary. What is the history of Waiahole yes. Elementary? So Waiahole is 138 years old. It was established during the King Kalakaua period. And so this school has a lot of history and tradition and culture. This is like a kind of like island oasis back here. It is. You know, we're kind of, like you said, hidden, tucked away, very prideful in what we do as a school. And I try to incorporate the culture into the thing, into things that we do here. Would have never thought that I would be into education. I actually was a social worker. And it just so happened that my friend at the time worked at a high school. Well, I was going to sub for her, but then the principal offered me another position and I stayed. I needed to go back to school at some point. I had no college or school. And so I went back to school and I stayed at Mililani High School for about 10 years before I made the leap into administration. Can't catch me. I love the school setting and I think that's why I've, I've stayed in, in it. I actually went back to school so that I could stay at the school level because I think that's where the difference is at, is at the school level. And I'm really passionate about the work that I do with kids as well as with teachers, families, and staff members. I have always believed that to be a lifelong learner and I need to get better as a school leader. And so I always try to find opportunities for me to get better as a leader. And so one of those ways is I took a class. It was a series of three classes, paid for the course on my own and I wanted to continue the the modules after and so I applied for the scholarship from HEA which allowed me to take a Harvard class leading schools which then helped me become a better school leader and helping our school transition from the pandemic into face-to-face -face learning. I always say it's not about me but it's about the work that we do together as a school and as a team um, so while I'm very fortunate to partake in this scholarship it, it's going to make me a better school leader for, for my school. The student enrollment is high, high for local kids Correct. Uh, Native Hawaiians is more than half. And then uh, we're a free and reduced school. That means our children get have access to free meals. Being a smaller school, what are some of the challenges that you guys have to face and overcome? I'm going to say one of them is budget because budget is dependent on student enrollment. And so less the less students you have, the less your budget is. And so I'm always having to advocate for small schools and making sure that even though we don't have the funding, I can still provide opportunities for our kids. Family 
is what makes the school setting or the educational system work because we're like an extended ohana, which I think is why I stay into education because family is important to me and my school is my second family. Hey, if you have an awesome teacher that's impacted your life, post about them on social media. Use the hashtag MyAwesomeTeacher. And for more information, head over to HawaiiEducationAssociation.org. Brought to you by Hawaii Education Association. Child and Family Service has been touching the lives of thousands of families for more than a century. And this year is no exception as it continues to provide hope for those in need. Child and Family Service was born local to the islands in 1899. We're over 120 years old. We have offices on every island except for Lanai, but we provide services across the state. The impact that Child and Family Service has is really about hope. It's about healing, it's about giving opportunity to see that things can change for the better. And that's really important to us. So for our earliest keiki, we serve families that have little ones, helping them be good parents, teaching parenting skills, and helping them with their education. We like to empower our youth, really looking at how we can help the teens succeed and see that they have all sorts of opportunities in life. We also work with a lot of families who've experienced trauma, whether it be domestic violence or child abuse, and really how do we bring hope to those families and the healing that they need? And then of course our kapuna, taking care of our kapuna and their caregivers. So today we're here at our EVA main campus. This is one of our main locations for child and family service. We have family centers in Waimea, over on Kauai, also in Kapa'a. We also have family centers in Hilo and Kealakekua, as well as Maui County and even Molokai. There's been a lot of stress in our community over the past year, and our staff has really been present. And uh, we've stayed open, 100%, boots on the ground, making sure our community is taken care of. And it's really open to anyone who needs it. We also are really data-driven, and so we measure our impact through strong data to make sure that the community knows that if you're investing in our organization, because we're private nonprofit, that we actually have impact to those that we serve. So the special program that we're doing is Hope Shines Through, a story of resilience with Paula Fuga. Many people don't know that her journey has been one that has been incredibly challenging. And so we decided that the best way to do it is to just have a sit down, talk story conversation. And what's really nice is that it's intertwined with beautiful music that she's written and will be performing. So the premiere of the special is Saturday, May 29th from 6 to 7 p.m. on KGMB. There's a couple of encore airings. The first will be on Sunday, May 30th from 6 to 7 p.m. on KHNL, and then on Monday, May 31st from 8 to 9 on K5. I think Paula's story is one that needs to be shared, and also we'll be sharing more about child and family service and how the services that we do help people in similar situations. Brought to you by CPB Foundation and Child and Family Service. Coming up, a new and easy way to manage your money. See the new app from First Hawaiian Bank when Hainau returns. Many people have become interested in starting a career in real estate and seeing the headlines of this booming market. So if you want to test the waters, Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Hawaii Realty's RISE program can help you build a solid foundation to find success in the market. The RISE program is Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Hawaii Realty's training program to induct new realtors into the actual business of doing real estate. Once you've completed your state course and gotten your license, that's when you join the RISE program. RISE really walks you through all the fundamentals of, of being a real estate and how to engage in the business, not only from basics of open house and contracting and dealing with buyers and sellers, but the whole spectrum of what to expect. I chose Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Realty because of the RISE program. I interviewed at multiple brokerages. Many are great, but it was really the RISE program which I decided would be the best fit for me. It really lays the foundation for us. The curriculum is excellent, and then there's 
constant ongoing education from that point on. We have guest speakers come in every class, whether it's ranging from a home inspector to another seasoned agent to a mortgage loan officer to be able to talk story and share experiences that as a brand new agent, it, it's just good to know those things. It's really important when you're a new agent to make sure you can hang your license with a company that has a good training program and also as a network of support for you. The training that we have with RISE it really sets us apart. It gives us a foundation of knowledge and information that we need. Um, the market is very competitive, so it can be scary as a new agent, and the RISE training program gives you the confidence that you need to get out there and know that you also have a network of support that can help you. So the RISE training program has allowed me to build on my existing professional foundation and leverage my skills and experience from prior roles and confidently apply them to real estate. Our culture at Berkshire Hathaway Home Services Hawaii Realty is very collaborative and beneficial to my clients as I support them in this ultra-competitive market. Weekly, our team shares trends in the marketplace, including potential trouble spots, which help us as agents ensure our clients are successful. We have a greater exposure to the pulse of the evolving market as a group rather than as individuals. If I ever have a question, I have a handful of people that I can call and I know they'll pick up the phone and um, be able to help me, which then gives me the confidence to approach my clients and, and them know that I can, I can make things happen for them. Brought to you by Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Hawaii Realty. First Hawaiian Bank launched its new mobile banking app, and the app provides intuitive account tools that make it easy to track spending. Plus, you can view all your financial accounts in one place. Since the start of the pandemic, managing you know, our financial lives has just become a lot more challenging. Uh, things like keeping track of all your monthly bills, credit card payments, recurring subscriptions, retirement investment accounts. Things like that, it's just really time consuming and overwhelming. When we look at typical mobile banking apps, you know, they allow you to check balances, transfer money, make payments, deposit checks, you know, find the nearest ATM. So our new app does all of that and more. The main difference is that the app utilizes artificial intelligence and it takes all of your accounts, your transaction data, it cleans it, it categorizes it, and it presents it to you in an intuitive scrolling interface. So that's what we call our insights feature. Information like changes in your spending behavior, decreases, increases in your utility bills, monthly payment due dates, monthly trends. So they're all personalized for you and shown in a list of insights that you just scroll through. It's really just identifying things you should be aware of to help you manage your money better. All financial institution accounts can be aggregated in our app and connected in one place, even the ones held at other other places, including 401ks, investment accounts, credit cards, mortgages, you know, things like that. Really just bringing everything together in a holistic view. Seeing all my accounts, even my wife's accounts and other places really helps me kind of see all the finances, see what's moving around in and out. The app provides you that visibility that you may have to log into other systems before to see, especially credit cards. Credit cards, you have tons of transactions that are coming through and being able to see that all in one place and then get notified when things don't look right is really important. And I find the most value from that. Really just making informed financial decisions is just a lot easier when you can see everything in one place. So the best part is that when you bring in all of your accounts and you can see it in one place and you utilize the tools that are in the app, customers can feel more confident in their abilities to reach their goals. So whether it's saving for a house, a big purchase, college tuition, or just managing your day-to-day -day expenses, like tracking merchant credits, or getting notified when something doesn't look right, our app really helps customers be connected to their finances and help them make those better decisions. The app really can be downloaded right now in the Apple or Google store, or you can update it if you already have it. You can go on our website, fhp.com. You can contact us, provide us an appointment time that you want to meet. If not, then you can just walk into any branch and they're happy to help you. Our call center as well can service you. It's kind of intuitive to go through an app. They just download it, they jump right into it. I mean, you'll find that it's pretty easy to move around it. Brought to you by First Hawaiian Bank. Coming up on High Now, an interactive experience to remember those we lost. We're taking a tour of Many Rivers One Ocean. Details on this year's Shinyo Lantern floating activities and how you can participate after the break.
Hey, Aloha gang, even though we can't gather at Ala Moana Beach the way we normally do, you still have a chance to leave notes for those who we've lost. This is Many Rivers, One Ocean. It's an interactive experience being put on by Shinyo in Hawaii. Every year, for the past 20 years, we've been gathering at the Magic Island at Ala Moana to do what's called the Shinyo Lantern Fling Hawaii. But since last year, because of the pandemic, we haven't been able to do that. And so we had to consider what we could try to do in these difficult times. We thought the fact that people could gather at the beach and remember lives that meant to them was really important. But because we couldn't do it at the beach, we had to figure out something else. So this year, we're bringing that experience, remembering the past, and then connecting it to the present ourselves and heading to the future into one of our parking lots, and we're calling it Many Rivers, One Ocean. I'm standing right inside the sort of the centerpiece, centered around this uh, large-scale lantern. So it's a, it's a lantern that you won't hold, but you actually enter and walk into with friends or family. Reservations are made online, and then what happens? Okay, so once you make a reservation, you actually come to this place, come all the way down Young Street off of Eisenberg into this parking lot. Park here, it's all reserved if you have a reservation. Check in, where we're gonna just check your temperature, do a simple questionnaire, and then you're gonna get a check-in welcome kit, which includes a message and a little light. And once you got that, we'll guide your way through this side, which is where these booths are. How long is the reservation for, time-wise? Half an hour. So in the half hour, everything happens starting what we're doing right now. Come over here with your the welcome package, which has the message card. And we have these Sharpies over here to write your messages. And once you're ready, you can walk all the way to the first installation. They can take all the pictures they want to, oh, so yeah. yeah. Awesome. So you got your message, you're ready to go, and we're going straight into the large-scale lantern. Because of the size of the lantern, we're limiting each group to be here for five minutes only. Five, min yeah. five minutes inside the, inside the lantern, right. Yeah. But you have all that time with your friends or family, what have you. And that's where you would actually place the lanterns into any of these hooks that are on the bamboo trees. So for people who want to make reservations, go to lanternfloatinghawaii.com and you can also do even online messages if you cannot make it or choose not to make it here. On top of what we're doing here, inside this space, we're also having a televised program called Share Your Light, which will air on May the 31st. The fact that we can remember people that mean a lot to us in a collective space, in the same space, might be something that might help one another to help inspire each other. And I think that was the important thing about the Shinya Lantern Fling Hawaii experience. So in a different way, we thought we'd bring it over here. Brought to you by Shinyo Lantern Floating Hawaii. Oh, I love that we're still able to do things for that. Yeah, definitely. Many rivers, one ocean. Make sure you book your reservations all online. Hey, it's Memorial Day weekend. What's your it plan? It is. It's Rel's birthday this weekend. Happy birthday, Rel, from Uncle Kaino and the whole Hi Now crew. Bro. Oh, you doing anything? I want to go to the beach. I need some sun, maybe a little exercise. I got my low-carb Pokeball yeah, diet. See? Don't you feel better we'll now? We're trying to get fit, yes. We're going to get fit out in the sun <laughs> this weekend. We hope you guys do, too. Thank you for watching Hi Now. Remember, you can catch any of our segments again on HiNowDaily.com. That's right. Be sure to follow us at Hi Now daily on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube as well. Click that subscribe button. Next week, we've got Waterman Mark Healy in the house. He's cooking up something. Oh no, check it out. And Purvey Donut Stops, new location. We'll see you guys Monday morning. Bye now. Hello.